16 years ago today, I was lying in a hospital bed with two black eyes, bruises as black as my dress all over my body, ligature marks around my neck, and permanent brain damage. I'm Grace. This is Truth Be Told with Grace. And now, more than a decade and a half later, I want to tell you how the monster that I married has turned my children against me. If you're not already familiar with the backstory, I invite you to watch the 10 part series, The Monster That I Married, followed by the five part series after the assault and the conclusion, Freedom from Trauma Bonds, Narcissistic Abuse, Domestic Violence, and The Monster That I Married. You know, <laughs> it wasn't enough that Wade devastated me emotionally, physically, and financially. It wasn't enough that he depleted my sanity and that he damaged my reputation. No, it wasn't enough. Because he then had to take my children from me too. My children around whom my entire life revolved. My children, who I sacrificed for, they were on, they were, they were in my every thought, in my every decision. I wanted to give them the mother that I never had and that I was never gonna have because I was raised by a malignant narcissist and an alcoholic father. And that was an existence that I never wanted my children to know. It's really a no-win situation, you know? If I kept silent, then I just confirmed my guilt to my kids. If I spoke up, I confirmed my craziness to my kids. Thank <laughs> you. You can't win. You just can't win. If I told my kids about what he had done, what he was still doing, what he's still doing to this day, if I told them all of that, then I drag children into adult situations, which is a huge no-no and a terrible thing to do to a child. But a narcissist will do it to a child because they don't care. It's a manipulation technique. But what do kids know about this? Kids don't understand this type of thing. They don't understand these manipula manip manipulation tactics. They think mom is mad, dad is happy. Mom makes me do things I don't want to do. Dad lets me do whatever I want to do. Mom has so many rules. Dad hardly has any rules. Mom makes me try food I don't want to eat. Dad lets me eat Pop-Tarts all day. Conclusion, mom sucks, dad rocks. And that's how they think. They are being used as pawns in a sick chess game that they know nothing of. I think by now my children are aware of the abuse. I know at least one of them knows about the assault. It's really funny. He's chosen to take this blame the victim mentality type of thing. It's very common actually in society because people don't want to believe that this person that they look up to, this person whose approval that they seek, this person that they love, that they care about is actually a rabid beast beneath this velvety exterior that they've portrayed themselves to be. This is not unique to children. This happens all over the place. You see it when women get sexually assaulted. Well, if she hadn't been wearing that clothing. <laughs> As if that makes it okay. <sighs> what do children know about these things? What do children know about intermittent reinforcement and, and the red herring fallacy and projection what do children know about that? What do most adults know about that? Even counselors don't even know about those things. You know, we had this counselor. Oh my God, this 
fat turd of a counselor. I couldn't stand him. His name was Michael. It was our last counselor we had hated this guy. Hated him. Somehow, Wade managed to hoodwink this idiot into believing that Wade was actually not the victim, but that he was so distraught over the level of violence that he just didn't realize he was capable of doing something so horrible and the struggle he's had internally to come to grips with the fact that he almost killed somebody. Oh, and this idiot went after me, the counselor. Wade has likely told the children that he's changed. He's probably rationalized that because he wasn't violent before, which by the way, isn't true because I talked to his first wife and he hasn't been violent since that it was something that I brought out of him because I was such a horrible person, so hard to get along with. So I must've brought this out of him, but he's a changed man. Everyone who's anyone who's ever dealt with a narcissist knows Narcissists do not change, ever. They just get more refined with age. And there's also so many more ways to abuse a person than simply laying your hands on them. What does a child know about that? It's the little things, the little comments, the little underhanded comments, and the minimization of what he did and has done and continues to do. You know that Wade and, and Ralph, the, the ultimate enabler, Ralph, they have dubbed the assault, by the way, that nearly killed me. It's, it's now, it's the incident. That's what they call it, the incident. My brain damage is way worse than a mere incident. You would think that the child would gravitate towards the parent who's loving, who's there, who, who does discipline, that has healthy boundaries. You think that the child would gravitate to that parent, but it's the opposite. And you know why it's the opposite? Because there's no fear. There's no fear of losing that parent. You see, my children know, they know, whether it's consciously or subconsciously, that they will always have my love, that I will always be there for them, that I will always support them and love them. But with Wade, he left my daughter when she was six years old. Now he's in her life now, how convenient. He probably told her, oh, your mother, whatever. Okay, I'm not even gonna go there. Now here he is being the dad he should have been when she was six. Like, where was he? When you were throwing up, when you had the flu, where was he ever? But he's here now. It's the same thing with my son. His father was always so enthralled with all of these conquests. We used to call them flavors of the week. Like literally we would joke about it. Even Wade would joke about it. He'd be, yeah, I'm already sick of this flavor. See, my son knows that he was never a top priority in Wade's life. My daughter knows she was never even a thought in his mind. Sadly, children will very often turn towards the abuser and away from the loving parent. Notice that I said abuser. Because parental alienation is abuse. My children are being abused and they don't even know it. Children need both loving parents in their lives. So many times I told Wade, the best way that you can love your son, because he wasn't in my daughter's life, the best way you can love your son is to show respect to his mother. And he never did. But then, what does a narcissist know of love for anyone else other than themselves? That's the truth. I'm grace. This is truth be told with grace.